sounds good. Can you hear that? Yes. In this week's video, we've squeezed a very large person into a very small car. For those of you that know the channel, hopefully you can guess what I'm in. For those of you that don't know the channel and like your cars, hopefully you can still guess what I'm in. A car that I clearly don't fit in very well, as you can see, but it is, of course, my wonderful Renault 5 GT Turbo. And it's about time we had this thing back out on the road and back out on the channel. And my, every time I get in this and drive it, it is a revelation. When you get out of the Taycan that you barely know you're even driving, it's so smooth. This thing throws you around all over the place. Loads of creaks, loads of rattles, but that's kind of what it's all about, these older cars. To be fair though, this one could probably do with a lot of TLC, and that's one of the topics I want to cover in this video. So if I'm honest, hand on heart, this car probably hasn't been getting the love recently that it deserves. It's kind of just been sat in the garage. And to be honest, I should be doing more to it to get it back to perfect condition. It's running really well, but you know, there's just all these slightly tatty bits that need doing and it really does rattle and shake. On the channel, we had Nick's wonderful, completely restored to better than factory Renault 5. And that thing was so tight, so firm, no rattles, no creaks. The job he'd done on that was astounding, but it's a lot of man hours and a lot of cost to get to that level. At a time when Ferrari have just released the Dodeci Cilindri with 830 brake horsepower, V12, 6.5 litre, great looking car, we have to make do today with just 1.4 litres and four cylinders. But we do have a turbo, of course, the Ferrari doesn't have that. But things that I've had done to this car, and unfortunately there is some bad news that I have to share with you about this car right now. So, it's recently been in for its MOT and it passed. Uh, two issues, the, the front pin's a little bit play in the front pin's there, but the big one, that flagged up, which is of bigger concern, is yes, the front subframe is corroded, but not excessively weakened, 5.3.3. So, checking it out, yes, it is indeed not looking great. So, it's kind of heartbreaking really to see that, you know, it feels like the car is dying a little bit or trying to, to leave this earth when you see things like that. And these cars, as we know, are an absolute magnet for rust. They rust so beautifully and this car hasn't been out in the rain. It's been in the garage under a cover pretty much ever since I've owned it. The problem is with the UK it is just so damp. It's so damp we're evolving gills. The humidity in the UK kind of hovers at around about 90% most of the time. So the air is damp, even when it's sat in a garage. Ideally, you need one of those cocoon things, right, to really sort of control the humidity and temperature of, of a car, but I just don't have room for that at the moment. And it wasn't something I thought I'd need, to be honest. These cars in California, where the humidity is well below 50% most of the time, are gonna be fine. In fact, if you go to Vegas, I think the humidity there is below 20%, but, so much moisture in the air that the car is under constant attack. Really, you should have it in a proper climate control environment. Old cars like this, or have them really well sealed and treated. And that's the thing, this car never really had that. It was restored, but honestly, it wasn't a great restore. You know, you the paint needs a bit of work, and it's just, it's, it's a great car. It's in good condition, really good condition, but it's not in any way showroom. If this car, still shakes around, still rattles, it's a bit kind of loosey-goosey, still, oh, still great fun to drive, really, really enjoying it. But yeah, it, it's just, you know, a little bit kind of, there's things that, that need doing. It's generally good condition, mechanically pretty sound, the engine is wonderful, and this is on old fuel as well, really old fuel, a year old, which is bad. You shouldn't leave fuel in these cars sat around for ages, it's not good for the carb, but Life kind of gets in the way. I've not been giving this car the, the attention, the TLC, the love 
that it really does deserve and it does deserve it it should be enjoyed more and I should be spending more time getting it back to sort of near perfect condition so we're going to take it for a good drive today we've got it taxed again run the fuel down as much as we can because we need to do that get some fresh fuel into it I understand SO fuel uh, super fuel is fuel without any ethanol content so we'll get some of that in there these cars of course built designed created driven long before ethanol was ever added to fuel back in the days of of lead as fuel. Can you believe we used to put lead in fuel? That sounds crazy, doesn't it? But get some of that fuel in because ethanol is not good for your rubber seals, etc. All that good stuff in old cars. So it's really about just kind of looking after it as best you can. But it is still an absolutely wonderful car to drive. So at MOT, I, I advised it yes subframe so we're gonna to have to get that looked at. I'll come on to that in a bit but what else have we done recently well as you know we shipped the carb off for a complete restoration and rebuild and it came back perfect the car runs really well now no flat spots no hesitancy when you put your foot down on the gas because the the enrichment jets are working again and the carb the previous carb was in an absolute state it, it holds idle really well so mechanically it's sort of running really well and let's say this is old fuel need to get some new fuel in there as soon as possible but we had that done. Also, there was uh, an issue with the fuel tank in this car. Now, I repaired the fuel tank. The bung of doom, as it's known, really common problem in these cars where the, the where they've rerouted it for the GT version. They put a yellow bung in there and they only glued it in. The glue fails and it starts seeping out there. The only way you can really do it is to melt the plastic back together. Don't do that with a full tank. So we did that and oh, I did that myself. And it, yeah, it's, it's held up all right but there is a, a rubber collar around the top of the sender unit which goes to the top of the tank just behind that underneath that back seat there and when it was previously put back in i don't know if it was done up tightly enough but the car was leaking fuel if you filled it up too much over out the, the gap in that rubber seal the collar and running down the side of the tank onto the floor and it stank of fuel in here, it was really bad. So we ordered a new collar, they still make them, which is great, they remanufacture them. Uh, and we've had that installed and sealed and you can see where the fuel had been running around previously. So hopefully it's fixed that problem because it's really frustrating having a car that leaks fuel. And it's just a horrible feeling, it's just not nice, it stinks and you just kind of worry about it, you know, should it go kaboom at some point. I've got a fire extinguisher there, you might see a Lambo yeah, lovely. What else have we had done mechanically? Well, nothing really, unfortunately. As I say, it's in pretty good condition, but we have to talk about the subframe. We have to talk about the subframe, because that is really the start of serious things beginning to happen. Now, the car is in generally really good shape. There's a few minor bits of corrosion on it, but when it was restored, you know, I'd, it was kind of a a DIY restoration job it looked like from the photos as well I don't know if you ever went off to any sort of pro garage that does this thing for a, a proper living it's a decent job but it's not a great job hence all the creaks and rattles and stuff but subframe was never really treated never really sealed so we need to get it off for some work to be done on that and I might just get everything else sorted while we're there. The question is how much you spend on getting this restored. Now with the value of these things at the moment going up and up, you know, I could sell this on as is and probably still make decent money on it, I think, because of all of the, the parts that it's got, everything kind of still here, present accounted for. It drives really well. It's still a really solid car. It just Oh, it, it's great. It's really good fun, I have to say. Not quick. They're not quick anymore. We've been spoiled rotten over the years with ever-increasing advances in horsepower. But this does put a smile on your face, which is what it is all about. So we're going to have to get it off to a man who can do, or a woman, who can do the subframe. And that's going to be an engine out job to do it properly. Uh, and, you know, this comes to the question, how far do we go? Because the paintwork probably 
to be honest, if I'm brutally honest, could this car benefit from another total respray? Yes, it could. We could try bringing the paint back, because it's been resprayed already, we could try bringing the paint back to a good condition with a good mop, machine operated polish, good mopping, and it might come up really nicely, and we might just need to sort of touch bits up, but it's not the best paint job in the world. I'm not sure as well, I'm colorblind, but I'm not sure how accurate the color is on this as well, for tungsten gray. I mean, I know they kind of had a, did they have a kind of green look to them previously? Greenish, grayish look, I don't know. Maybe people with better color vision can comment on in the video, but yeah, it is running really well, but we are in summertime now, where we can get out and use this car in the dry. I know plenty of folk that don't take these cars anywhere near the wet for the reasons I've just cited and of course this hasn't been used in the wet and it still wants to try and commit suicide through crazy rusting as, as they they do so well these cars so we will absolutely get more content on this car coming I wanted to update you on the channel though with where we're at with this car yes we've still got it the ownership experience is still going well another thing we had done was a coolant flush it was i think just distilled water in the car so we've had proper uh, flush um, and proper coolant put in there the branded renault coolant so that will help things a little bit from a car perspective just to keep everything running a little bit help prevent some of that uh, internal engine rust setting in maybe that you get uh, if you're just using water right criminal i don't know why that was in there it's driving really well you've got to use these cars right just get them working get the fuel through them get the car moving get the engine working it's good for them and yeah it is it's running really well but yeah we could spend quite a bit of money on this car i think and get it back to a really really good condition because honestly this is the foundation of what i think is a great car it really is another thing with these cars as well is as we know the ev version of these cars has just been announced so how's this for the fact that these cars are still loved still sought after there are apparently at least 50,000 pre-orders in already for that new Renault 5 EV variant, which is great. Shows to me these cars are still treasured, still enjoyed. Uh, of course, it's not the original, though. The original is indeed the best one. So we're very fortunate to have that. But it's kind of a good position to be in, right, to own one of these when they're just kind of releasing the, the new one, to have the original version of this car on the road. And it is just a, a great car to be in. So that is it for this one. Do stay safe. Stay well. See you on the next one. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.